Hi everyone, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. Welcome to uh, some painting of some birds. Now I'm going to be painting some uh, a little bit more advanced birds with you. I've really kind of changed them this last year. And uh, these are the birds that I uh, show you in Garden of Birds Volume 3. Matter of fact, I have I brought up a couple of them right here. I'll show you. These are the, this is the bird from the cover here of Garden of Three uh, Birds Volume 3. And you can see all the little detail work that I put into the bird there. Gives them a little bit more life. I really love this uh, um this uh, chestnut uh, nuthatch here and, and all the work that goes into them, how much more life that they have. Now, how do I go about doing something like that? I put, uh, we do a, a repetition of the values and the tones that we put into an area of the bird. In other words, I just, in, in a lot of things like in Garden Birds 1 and 2, I work through an area at least once. Now, it gives you a good look to your birds, a nice life to the birds. Um, if you want a little bit more, you spend just a little bit more time and you rework those tones looking for subtle tonal changes. And I show you that in some of the palettes, uh, like in the, the very first uh, lesson of the Garden of Birds in the Nuthatch, when you're putting in these light tones and some of these gray tones that you see here. See how these gray tones change from the blue through the burnt sienna tones to the yellow tones. You'll actually see me out on the palette. And, and I'll show you those grays that I make there. But look to one side, I have slightly blue. One side, I have slightly yellows and burnt siennas. And I'm moving through those particular tones several times as I paint that area. That's what gives them just a little bit more life and, and, and energy. We still have to keep the overall look of warm and cool to the birds. But that... Um, that really makes a difference, okay? So what I have today is the uh, Western Kingbird here. And let me step back and I've sketched on a, a Western Kingbird kind of like where I want him to go. And I'm going to put him with some daisy-like flowers. I'm not sure there'll be absolutely, it might be like yellow daisies. He has yellow on his body here. He has these beautiful blue, uh, blue violets and stuff that are on, on top of here and some of the light yellows that come through here. Big, big mantle area here, the back part of his back and the wings. They're a larger bird. They're, um, those of you that have seen them, they're, you know, about this, a, a little bit larger than a robin. When I go out and spend time at the house out in Nebraska, they, uh, they're they all over, especially in the uh, the spring and, and the middle part of the summer. They they follow me along when I'm using the tractor mowing the fields, and, and they love to... They love to just follow along and pick up the grasshoppers afterwards and stuff. So after I go through an area, they're really a fun little, they're a fun bird to watch and quite aerobatic for their size. So what I have here is I put him in this way and I put a, a spray of flowers that are going to go up uh, this way through the painting. And so we're going to start in some sky. Now I put the board here, it's just a medium white. And so I'm going to start some sky going this way, just so that that sky counters. I don't, if I have my energy of my flowers going away and my bird going one way like this, and then I go put that sky one way, there might be too much power to the viewer to go up that way. So in other words, it's like what I did here on the nut hatch out of the book. He is going down this way. The flowers are going down this way. By putting in my light, my sky and stuff going this way, then that that counters that. The same thing that I do here on this little guy here. Um, it, it's He is going this way, flowers are going this way, and a sky is, is mostly going that way. So it gives a nice uh, counter to those, uh, to those, uh, to the bird and stuff here. So a nice contrast, a nice visual contrast. So we'll use some of our painted simply colors here, which is, I'm opening up my palette here. Which ones exactly? I don't know. I have my my colors out here. I have some extra um, violet quinacridone uh, violet, which we're going to be using on another bird uh, in this particular video, the uh, purple finch. And uh, I'm going to use, I have all my choices of blues and stuff, but I think today what I'm going to do is go over to my uh, ultramarine blue. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue down here, okay, which I really, uh, really enjoy that color. And um, I'm going to take kind of a, a little bit of a clean brush here so I can keep my white fairly clean. And I'm just going to pick up a big dollop of that white and set it. You can see how thick that I do like my colors here. We'll put this up here for just a second. How thick I like my white. See how thick that is? I like my white very thick. As a matter of fact, when we make the white, we make the white a little bit thicker. And so I'm going to put into this, right into the, into the, uh, 
uh, ultramarine blue here. I, it just makes a beautiful blue. Uh, sometimes I will add, you know, a little red violet to take it more to a purpley side here. I think this will make a nice blue because we'll take his his head to a blue, blue violet. So if we play a blue uh, that's a little bit different against it, matter of fact, we might add just a tiny bit since I have it here of my thalo into this just to mix those two together and you get more of a, a true blue when those two thalo is a blue green ultramarine is a blue violet so you mix the two together you get more of a true blue and if i'm going to go to the blue blue violets or purple side on his head that goes with that yellow then uh, having a more of a blue might be a good call here so let's just streak some of this through and normally i model you, you know you see me many times model the brush where i don't over mix the colors but when i'm back here like this and I'm going to have a lot going on in this painting. I'll overmix a little bit till I have almost one color like this uh, into the painting. And that will make my sky and everything a little bit softer. So I'm just going to streak some of this through the painting like this. Let's drop a little bit of this down here. Just a little bit more casual here. And um, just kind of streak that through. I love just to put a suggestion of it, what we call the vignetting of the flowers. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to wipe back here and take some of this extra off. Now we'll have that blue. I'll leave that blue up there. We'll preserve that because we're going to come back and paint around the, around him a little bit later on. One of the things that I always like to point out, some of you don't know, I always have a paper towel in my hand. I'm always, and I, I got a, and I'll show you, I got a big old stack of them all torn up here, all, all ready to go to the right size. And I'll go through a paint like a whole, oh, at least half that stack during a painting like this because I'm constantly wiping and changing. And I use that paper towel to adjust the colors in my brush. And um, it is, it's essential. You don't, you know, painting, everything we do here is all about consistency of the paint. And you can't fight the consistency. And so I use that paper towel to help me adjust consistency sometimes. And, uh, uh, take some of the excess out of my out of my uh, out of my brush without without uh, you know cleaning it. I don't necessarily clean my brush because I like to go through all the colors and that little bit of color that's left in that brush just adds that harmony. And so you you're changing your colors, you're evolving your colors. You're not cleaning it and putting on sterile colors all the time. Okay. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to grab a brush and usually I will grab like a six or, you know, even up to an eight, a four, six or eight, any of the brushes that I want. I'm going to use a four here today for most of the painting of the Kingbird. I'm going to set the Kingbird in here first. And the first thing we'll do is we'll come in and we'll start to find some tones that will work with our painting. I'm going to take some uh, Hansa yellow that's here. We'll drop that down. We'll take some uh, yellow oxide right here. And Hansa yellow by itself is a nice uh, transparent, uh, semi-transparent yellow. And the yellow oxide's a little more opaque. The yellow, the Hansa yellow can go very green under the attack of blacks and, and so, some of those colors very quickly where the Hansa yellow doesn't, I mean, excuse me, the yellow oxide doesn't. So if I'm going to come in here and I know I'm going to manipulate in here with some blues and some uh, browns and stuff like that, that might have a tendency to turn the Hansa uh, to a, a little bit greenish tone, which wouldn't be too bad for this bird. I, I But I mix in a little bit of... of uh, yellow oxide into that that gives it a little bit more power to the to the color so we'll come right down here all the way down towards his tail we'll walk a little bit of this tone right up now this is where i start to change uh some of my the way in which i do things um i'm going to take some of this tone and i even though you're going to see a little bit of it i'm going to put some of this tone to start out with right up in here onto the mantle of the bird I'm going to take a little bit of this tone up underneath and up underneath his face up there where you might see maybe I'll brush a little bit up and up into this particular area. Now, this is something that I didn't do on, you know, previous volumes of the birds where I carry these tones a little bit farther, a little bit more into other areas. I pick out areas and, and, and base into those tones. And what that does is you might pick up a little bit of that here and there into the painting and that's what gives them just a little bit more life. Okay, so... We'll start there. Now we'll make a, a real soft uh, kind of gray color. He has a lot of, um, 
our yellows and stuff into him. So let's get up here and let's also, and we're going to be using some violets and stuff. So let's make ourselves like a purple color, a blue, a violet. And then we'll also use some of our white and our black and stuff into this. But let's just take the, the violet color and some of our yellows here. And you see together, you'll start to get these grays. These grays get a little bit more towards the blue side, maybe a touch of black there. And then let's just take some white here. And let's lighten this up and let's see where we are. And that's a beautiful gray right there to him. And it should be ever so slightly to the blue side. So let's just kick a little bit of blue, more blue into that right there. Okay. And so now I've got a nice, beautiful blue gray. That's going to go really nice with the yellows because it has the yellow in it. Okay. And so, and this is what I want to do when we start painting like this. We want to do a little bit more complementary, uh, you know, color toning and stuff than we, than we have done, you know, in previous lessons and stuff. So now I'm going to come in and I'll set some of that gray right in there like this. Now, one of the things that I do is slightly different is I'll change the tone back up. So let's go back up here. We'll use uh, contour following strokes. And let me come in just a little closer here. Okay, and we'll move over just a bit so you can see that. We're going to use contour following strokes. In other words, I'm just going to use short strokes down like this, the base end. We're going to right around up to his neck, I mean to his beak. And we'll kind of follow the contour this with his strokes. We'll leave a little bit of light right, right around his eye there. And we'll come back down this way. We'll change the tone up. Let's go back to... Maybe even a little bit more blue into this. So you see that gray changes color a little bit. You know, we'll change that. Maybe we'll take a stroke or two of that. And then we'll go over more towards the yellow gray here. So these grays are, are changing their tones. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll drop some more of that gray with a little bit more yellow in it. Right up here like that. Right into some of that yellow. Maybe a stroke or two of that blue or gray in there. So you see this modeling of the grays and those tones? That's where you get more life and more interest. Before I base it all in, let's get a little bit of blue, a little bit of black. Right here, we'll darken that down just a bit. Now, right in here, well, just like a lot of birds, they have kind of a, a dark area that goes through and then goes right through back behind the eye there. So we'll drop some of that in. Okay, I'll wipe off the extra right there on my on my towel. And we'll use a little bit of this grayness here also for some roundness to his form. So we'll put a little bit of shadow here from that. But see that yellow to blue to some of these grays changing up here? That's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to start looking for more of that in these as I paint these birds. Let's get a little more blue into that right there as we pull down and let these two just kind of kind of come together right there like that okay and let's get a bit more of that blue into that gray and let's just take another little stroke or so of that right up in there so you see that tone kind of changing all throughout his head there and we'll take some of those grays and we'll short stroke these grays into this part of his body, sometimes more yellow into that, then sometimes more blues, and I just change that tone up a bit. So it models, you can see the whole model tone. Let's get a little more blue into that, a little here. You can see this whole modeled tone coming in here now, All right, like that. So different. Kind of yellowish and grays and get some other darker blues here but kind of um and you see i'll take several strokes right through the area there too just to kind of break up some of those colors and and get all that different look back in there and that's what makes it really makes him really really nice looking here let's take a little black right here one of the colors that he goes almost all the way to is the burnt sienna, but burnt sienna with like a, a little bit of blue into that. Such a beautiful painting color for birds and flowers and everything. The real warm, 
deep and I love the burnt sienna color in the heritage line. It's just such a rich, rich tone. Let's grab some of that and we'll start that nice deep tone here. And, and I like the burnt sienna, especially if I'm going to go head towards a blue, which we will in some of these areas later as we get to those blue grays. And let's drop some of that in. We'll leave just a little edge here so we know where that first of those coverts are in his wing. And we'll drop a stroke or two of this down here onto his longer uh, feathers. Down along his primary flight feathers, we can do a little bit longer stroke there, like that. And uh, change up that color, maybe a little bit of yellow into that, change up that tone. Here, warm that up a bit so you can see I'm gone from here up to here up to this way here. And uh, we'll drop and this changes that tone up, see? And it makes the, the wing a little bit different here. We'll hit a little bit more right up in here and get some of that into that that tone right in there. Now right in here we have the, the, the line that is going to be for his... Um, little uh, coverts here so we're just going to be right in that area there just so I don't lose that too much and uh, then these the directions of these will pull down these little coverts will come this way on these big flight feathers on him and uh, we'll do that and I, I did that on the, the nut hatch as well and I'll show you that in here when I did that nut hatch I put these feathers some of these covert feathers pulling down like that and that just gives a, a little bit different feather direction and a lot more interest really to the painting now let's go back towards our burnt sienna on black a little darker he'll have a, a darker stroke right there and then right down onto his tail here which can go there they're a beautiful bird uh, and we'll go right down there like that right along his tail now I'm going to take my finger and take some of that off because the tail is leading you right out of the painting like this so um, I need to I got a, a, a pattern line there or a sketch line there so I need to uh, be aware of that that I want to take that out so but uh, I want to also soften this edge like that so that's kind of the look I want to have so I'll take a little bit of blue into that color there and we'll just paint right up to the edge of that, right there like that, and just let that kind of fade out just a bit there. And we'll be able to, to uh, redirect that in just a little while. I'm going to take some of this nice color that is down here on this tail, let that fade away, take some of this color that's on this tail here. And I'll sometimes use, to, to, when I first start out, I'll use my big brush like this and the chisel edge of it because it puts it on a little bit more casual here we'll put on the um, the top part of the beak then I'll just come now he has just a tiny he, he is like almost like a raptor he's got a little bit of a point just a, a tiniest bit of a point that he uses to hook on the bugs and stuff longer on his top than he does on the bottom almost like a shrike does and then we'll pull a little bit of that down to the bottom side here and just kind of marry that into his face. I'll leave a little bit of light and if you lost your light, I lost just a bit of it, I'll just take a little bit of gray here and just push the edge of that right in there like that. And I like to use this because it's not perfect and it makes it more painterly there, okay? And I started doing that with a lot of the birds. Now one of the things I also do in the book is that's giving birds and stuff a lot more interest is I start to make two or three tones into the eye. Whereas before I just take black and kind of type top it, uh, you know, tap it into the area, let some areas be more transparent or not. Now I flip over and I put a warm tone in there as well. So now I'm going to take the corner of this brush like this, just a corner. I've wiped the brush. I'm going to take just the corner of it here and we're going to come in and we're going to just tap in to the to the right side and lower side of the eye will tap in some burnt sienna. Then I'll pick up some of that black and maybe this time a little bit more pure black. I'll tap it right here into the corner. And we'll come into the front side and the upper side of that eye. And I'll just tap in here some 
black. Now, that eye has gone out of round and everything, and that's okay, because I'm going to shape it up into position. You can actually have it a little bit larger than what you think you're going to have it, because we can paint it into position with the eye ring. But now I have an eye that has a little burnt sienna and a little bit of light there, and that little bit, just like that, adds so much to, to the bird, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, we'll, we'll set this brush down for just a second. And I might as well go ahead and work on that eye ring for just a minute. And I'll take my number four round, which is the brush I really like to paint. I don't like to use pure white anymore on the eye rings. I like to take it down off color, so I'll drop it down into here. And again, it's a color that I like to vary the tone on. So I will take some white and some a little bit of my yellows and some of my grays here. And let's just come in and we'll tap, actually tap in the eye ring. Uh, right around the eye. We'll vary the width a little bit of it, but I'm using it mostly to correct the the painting of the eye. And uh, on him, it's here, I might want a little bit extra thicker white up along the, the top side. That's going to give him a little bit more of an expression here. And I'll paint back and forth. So let me just pop in a little bit more light into that here. A little, I'll just tap right along the edge there, a little more light. Rather than stroking it all the way around, I use small little touches. Now, let's just pick up a little bit of black, and let's just correct that top part of that eye there, just pushing in like this and rounding it up. Try not to make a full, like, uh, circle of it, because that'll just make him look like he's staring, okay? Now, I have, so that sets my eye ring, but my eye ring itself is a little bit too large okay so now what i do and this is a change of what i've been doing is i'm going to take a little let's take a little burnt sienna in this too a little burnt sienna a little black change that tone a little bit let's make a little bit of a shadow right on the corner of the brush and let's use this little bit of shadowed corner to come in and paint down the size of that eye ring pulling out like this and that goes right into that base shadow that is already there and it paints that eye ring where we want it to go. Now, let's change the tone up. Let's add a little bit of blue or so to this here. So we'll change that up a bit here. Let's, uh, and I stuck my hand right in my, the bird's tail there. I gotta make sure, you know, I, I do have these around, the bridges around, and I like to use these bridges. These are just wood bridges. Keep your hand out of stuff that's wet. And I have to remember to do that because I get wet. <laughs> I get stuff on my hands all the time. So now I'll take that blue and I'll just paint around using some contour strokes and just slowly inch down and, and small down the top part of that eye ring here. Tap into that and paint this out right there like that. So I get that eye ring down to about the, the position or so that I want that, that uh, to be on him. We'll add a little more blue here, a little change in color just a bit. Okay, and that gives a nice look to that uh, particular eye ring, okay? So now, now we have, so we have the undertone basically done into his body here, and we have the uh, eye ring kind of set, it's not done. I'm going to take some, some burnt sienna and some black here, maybe a bit of the blue in it, which will help cool that down. Even though ultramarine is a warm tone, it's cooler than some of the other tones that I'm using today, so it will appear cool, and we use it as a cool. And I'm just going to come in here, and we'll just lighten that up just a bit here. A little bit of the blue into that. And I'm just going to come up here and drop a little bit there. Now, don't paint too long without changing that tone. That's the big thing, is change that tone. Always reach over and change that tone somewhat so it changes. And we'll use this to help round out some of the, the yellow areas of his body here. And just pull your finger through. I like to do that. That just gives a little bit of shadow and roundness to th that part of his body there. So now we've got a good tonal part. I need a little bit more yellow down here on this tail. There, It's actually called a tail covert area here. Base of his tail. Okay. The small feathers covering the tail down there. And uh, so I like that. And now let's 
work our shadows back in here. Let's get towards the blues. Look towards our blue, gray, some of that burnt sienna right up here. Change this tone over. We'll lighten it up with some of these other tones here, but I can shift it warm down the burnt sienna. I can shift it up here more towards the blue. Matter of fact, I'll put a little bit more blue right here. And with this kind of bluish color, let's come in and take a few strokes of some more shadow tone here. Not everywhere. We're using this just to add another tonal value to the bird. This is one of the changes I do now. So I don't just paint for light and dark anymore and finding the undertone and the lighter tone. I start finding different variations of tones and I look for those. So let's just put a little bit of that in here, right through there. See how that just models right through his face there? Let's pull some of that right out here like it's rounding his head here. Change it up a bit. Just get a little bit of burnt sienna into that. Change that up just a little bit. See how that changes? Right there like that. And let's just get a little bit of that darker tone. A little blue, maybe touch of black in it this time right down into his body here. That just gets a little more shadowy tone underneath all of that. Now, this is all the same in here. So this has to be changed up. Let's get a little bit of our grays. Now we want to leave this mostly brown, but here's the change I start to do. We want to leave it mostly brown, but I'm going to want a, a few little, little hits of that blue coming into here, into this brown. So the eye will still see it as brown, but you're going to start to see some little hits of that blue every once in a while. Just drag it through, because that's just good harmony. And maybe a little bit of our yellows here. A little bit of our yellows because we're picking them up there. We might pick up a little bit of that so the eye still sees it as brown, but you'll pick up some of these other tones of his body coming into that brown. And this is the, the care that you do. It takes just a little bit more longer, but the care that you do in doing that is going to give all this interest to that bird. Let's take some of that blue that we had up here. And let's just touch a little bit there up into his beak. Even though you don't see it very much, just add a little bit in there. Just because you might pick up just a, one little stroke of color of it there, but you see it. And that that is what's the important part. Let's get some of that yellow. Let's push some of that yellow back up into here again. We'll pick up this modeling of his tone right into there. Maybe a touch, just a touch of that right up underneath his eye, right up underneath here. And some of that will paint out. Some of that will, st might, will stroke or two of that might stay. But now you see more tones going into his, into him here. And your eye reads more tones and reads more interest. And that's what gives them more interest. So I go through reading some different color variations and tones, okay? Alrighty. Let's go through and answer a few more little shadows. Burnt sienna and black, burnt sienna black, a little bit of blue. I like that. Cool that down. Let's take another uh, run at some darker shadows right down in here inside the long flight feathers of the wing. We'll do that. Maybe there's a long stroke of it here on this side, which we see just a little bit of the wing there, which will just show just a touch of that wing there. We might pick up a, a bit of it right here between the mantle and these feathers that are overriding here, just a touch here, like that. Just so you see a little bit of that shadow there. You might pick up a line or two of it up in here in between some of these flight feathers. We'll, we'll put some of that in with the light, but they're uh, mostly gonna be brown and white, but we'll put a little bit in there. Why? Because it's a tone and it's a change, okay? And let's just take a little bit of that burnt sienna and just let's express that just a little bit out into here. I know it's fairly dark, but we'll carry that tone out even to the yellow. We're not changing the whole yellow area here. We're just pushing that tone out into here. And that's another thing that gives it some life. So once you touch a tone there, work through the body of the bird and add that tone in other places. All right. Now let's start up back up with our lights, okay? So we'll come in here, we'll grab some of our white, we'll come back down and you have, let's, let's go up first towards where my grays are gonna be. So I'm gonna have it 
really from a yellow to a gray. So this light's going to go right up in here to this gray, this blue gray, over here, down here, to this yellow gray. And this is kind of a good way to do it. I'll set up my lights. It's going to go here to a war real warm kind of yellow, over here to some grays, some different types of grays, more towards a blue gray here, and a little burnt sienna on the lighter yellow and blue kind of gray right up there. So my grays are changing. Right up around his face, we'll head towards this yellow or gray. We'll just put a little bit of that into the brush and let's just stroke a little bit of that down right in here like this, right into some of that. So we'll know that that color will be, and so it's a touch and a, and a lift off here that I do. Right in there like that to stroke and lift that off like that. Right there, boom. That puts that light color down there. Now we'll have a little bit of that. Let's stroke down, coming right off right off this area here, which is, this is gonna head into shadow and then pop right back out again. So we'll just break up this, just little touches of that here and there. And it helps sink in some of those other tones there. So maybe a, a bit more yellow oxide here onto this side or something, just a little softer down in here. So we know we're gonna go bright yellow down into there, so we don't need that. But that softens that out there. Let's head more towards our lighter blue grays here. And it's more of a, I have it here as a little blue, but it's a little bit more purpley color, which I wanna get in there. Matter of fact, we could use red violet or quinacridone violet, which I have right here to get it over to that blue purple here that I wanna have. And that's a pretty good tone right there. We'll lighten that up. Kind of a blue purple there. And we'll use some of that in here. Just a few strokes of that tone. And through here, you don't wanna get rid of all your other tones. Just start putting some around. Don't paint to avoid those other tones, just paint through them. And you'll see that modeling of that tone going through there. So now you'll see some of that. And let's just take a stroke or two of that through up here, right into those yellows. Doesn't hurt anything, just bring it right into those yellows. Just like that. A stroke or two of that right into there. See how that all those tones get addressed in there now. And let's drop some of that right where it would come right down here. Some of that right into his mantle, right down towards the wing. So now you're picking up just a hint of those purple tones here to just give him that extra little bit of life into that into his feathers there. Now, for beautiful harmony of painting, we could just touch a little bit, even though you don't see it in a reference photo or so, just touch a little bit of that down into the yellows down here because it's a complement of yellow and it works so very well. And maybe I'm going to have to make up a little bit more, which is something I do all the time. I'm constantly brush mixing and because, you know, you really don't want to paint all the time with the same tone. I constantly evolve it a little bit. Let's just get another little purpley tone here, a little more blue into that. So I want it more of a blue violet there. That's a pretty tone. And let's just pick up a little bit of that heading into these browns as well, right down like this. So now you see all those lovely tones. And this is what really everyone is that comments and stuff on my on my birds, they all go, wow, your birds have so much more life now. And this is why I'm carrying some of these tones, looking through and finding some of these tones and stuff that are going to be here on this bird. All right. Now I'm going to set that brush down for a minute here. And we're going to come in and we're going to work up a little bit. And I'm going to see if I can get this palette over here without disturbing him too much. So I can get a little bit closer into his face here. We'll do some detail work on his face, which is going to be towards the, the center of interest here on our painting. Okay. So one of the things I, I like to do is I like to set two highlights down. I like to set a low light, then a shine. And I'm going to come in here with just a little bit of gray, a little bit of this gray color. It's not a real highlight color, just a little bit of a gray color and set the first light onto his eye and then I'll lighten up ever so. And you see how my brush is not a perfect little point. So 
here. I don't like it to be absolutely perfect, but I do have to have some paint on it there, Dave. And I might get it too big when I touch down like that. And if I do, I just take it out with a little bit of the dark. So I'll take a little bit of dark and I'll lightly tap into that just a bit, just to push it down to the size of the eye that I want to have. Now, maybe I want to have a little bit more white interest on the eye ring itself. This is where I do like to put the white more now is on the, the actual stroke of the eye ring. So I might take a stroke or two right up here onto the eye ring. And you can see that puts a lot more interest right up there by the eye ring. Sometimes to the bottom side, I might tap a little bit of light right along to the bottom side. Here I wanna keep it to the top side mostly, but I might put just a little bit to the, to the bottom side there. And then I'll take some of my shadow color and paint that in and tap that into position there just a bit like that. So that gets a lot more interest to his to his eye. You can take some of that shadow color and so it's not a perfect ring, just back up into this eye ring just a bit like that. And you see you get more interest to the eye ring like that as well. Let's take some of this light gray. Let's come right along the division between the beaks here and just put a little bit so it's not perfect there. Let's just drag a little bit along the divisions there of the beak like that. And we'll take a bit of lighter gray, maybe a bit of warmth and stuff into that, a little bit of that burnt sienna into that. And we'll put just a little bit to the top there. I'm gonna keep the bottom side a little darker. So I'll head that to this blue black to the bottom side. Maybe I'll straighten this out a little bit this time, paint out with some of that dark down to the bottom side. It's actually, you know, when you're painting birds' beaks and stuff like this, you know, having places where it lightens and then disappears is a great thing. But it's actually sometimes easier to uh, paint it with that chisel of the brush than it is to come back like this and paint it. You know, I don't know, that chisel of that brush does really well. So does the number two, the number two paints it really well. And I'm just gonna give him just a suggestion there of that little hook at the end of his beak there because uh, you know they have that tiny little hook and used for catching those bugs. And I'm just gonna be a little careful here and get a nice beautiful little dark dark to the bottom part of his beak and that really helps a lot there to that. Now let's take some of the dark and here in the brush and let's just tap it. Burnt sienna on black, a little bit of blue here and um, let's just tap it right up in here and we'll imagine the, the tips of small little feathers. So we'll work that out there like that. Work that out. We'll put some light in there in just a minute and we'll work those contours out like this and down and this goes up over like his little cheek area and down that contour comes out like that. Here, we'll put a little bit of that dark out. There we go. Down, let's go up towards our purpley grays here. And let's get some of those. A little dark, let's get some of our purple right here, purpley gray, maybe a little bit more blue into that. Let's get that nice. And let's get that shadow into here. And see, this I pull and just set the brush down. So I'm just pulling a little bit and setting the brush down to get some of those little shadow tones in there like that. Little bits of that shadow tone stretching out. Sometimes I feather out the edges of a bird like that, especially if I'm coming down the neck like this. Sometimes I'll take the neck feathers out a little bit farther like that. It gives them more of a rough kind of look to them. And I like that. It's more of a realistic look where it's not absolutely perfect. And I'll do that same thing up to the like the top part of his head up here and take some of that out. Now we have to, uh, and you can see that gives a real nice realistic look there to him for that. But if we're going to put some more blue back in here, that's something we may have to restate again later, okay? But we can do that. Let's um, come up here with our blues and our purples here. Let's get some more light. That's right up here. Let's get that in. Let's get towards a, a little bit lighter blue color. 
that uh, ultramarine is a beautiful, beautiful pigment. And we use uh, the uh, European ultramarine as powdered form into the, into the uh, heritage. And we grind that up into the, into the paints and stuff. And there's quite a bit of it in. But it's just, if you've been painting for a long time with a thalo like I have, following the painted simply, ultramarine is just such a weak little pigment compared to that one. So now let's just put some strokes of that following the contour of his head here, up and around, to start making some of those feathers. We'll lighten this up in just a minute, but they get that little bit of bluish tone into that. Okay, some of that bluish tone comes in now. A little bit more, and a little bit more here. And I got to be careful not to paint too long with one of those tones. You want to change these up, you know, paint them and change them up here. Let's get a little bit of this bluish tone hitting here and there, in here. Move it around and get out of there so it doesn't get too much to that. Now let's get in and lighten that up some more. He will be quite light. So we'll lighten that up and let's get in there and put some light. And sometimes if the light doesn't stick as much as you want, you have to let it tack up a bit. So we might end up letting this tack up just a bit and come back and do this again. Because it, it, it uh, works. If it feels like it disappears on you, and mine when I touch it disappears just a bit. Not too bad, but just a bit. Um, if it feels like it disappears on you, you've got it built up with a lot of color there. And so it's not sticking as much. And so we'll let that dry up just a bit. Go work on some other things and we'll come back and do that again. Hit it, hit it again. Let's put a few little touches of that light out here. We'll work on his wings and we can go even go work on flowers and stuff like that and come back and hit him again later. But I'm going to take a little bit of that light just as a little tone right on the top of his beak there. Let's get to some of this light into this yellow here. Let's get some yellow oxide into that and a little bit of Hansa into that here to a nice light yellow tone. And let's come back in here and restate some of that light yellow right up here like that. Maybe a bit of that hits down comes down here. We'll take some of this out with blue, but it's better to have it there. We'll follow up and underneath his eye here. And so you may say, oh, well, you just put that back on some of the stuff you did and you're gonna, and yes, and I'm gonna take it back out again with some other colors. And this is what gets them so much interest. Let's take a little burnt sienna in yellow and stroke through that and see, now I get these other little tones of that color back in there. And that's where all of the lovely part of this bird starts to come alive. So yeah, you put on and you take off and you put on and you take off here back and forth. And I have to do it back and forth. That's what gives it its life. So we've got to do that. Let's lighten this up with a little yellow oxide. We'll come down here and we'll take a stroke or two of that right in there. We'll gray that up a bit because this is a kind of a shadow area here. So we'll turn that to the gray to the shadowy there and then we'll come back here. Let's get back into some of our haunts of yellows and lights, a little lighter yellow. Let's take some of that and come down. This is his bright, bright yellow is on there and sometimes it all depends you know on the, the photo you have and how the sunlight's hitting him how bright a yellow you want to make that and I'm going to stop short of just real brilliant yellow oxide I mean Hansa yellow by adding a little yellow oxide right now because I don't quite know how light will make his head but now I just want to use slightly longer kind of a contour following or these feathers fall out this way some feather strokes like that on him. We'll lighten that up a bit. 
you come back through here, his foot's going to be right in here, so you'll have his uh, thigh, the joint of his thigh right here, which will build out just a bit. But we'll add a few light strokes of this here. Up like that. Up into his body there. That's pretty nice. Let's put just a touch or so of that light yellow. Bing, right up there. This will get a little bit of that up and around his face. I like his face to always carry a lot of color because that's what gets him so much interest. Here, right up by that eye ring. Let's get some of that color in there again. Right in there like that. That builds that up on him. So let's come down into here now. And let's start, let's take some white down here, right down into these colors here. We'll take it off white here, so it's not quite so pure white, to a real soft tan. Some burnt sienna, some black, some of my yellows here. Beautiful. Any one of these colors will all work in here. Okay, any one of it will work. And let's come back. This is where he's going to have some coverts here. This is where his other feathers come down right down right down along like this and we'll just put in the light edge of these feathers right here like this this is part that makes him really pretty and i i like this uh, part of the painting here and and uh you know each bird how they fold their wings will make it of course a little different now these coverts will come up we'll fold these up like this fold these up and around me see how casual i am i'm gonna negative paint these and push them down into position. These are just the edges of those little wing of the feathers. Now we can come back and tap in a little bit more light, just like we do with the eye ring. You can hit a few areas a little bit more light, so they're not all exactly the same. Okay. And uh, let's do some of the long flight feathers here too. Streak this down through like that. Um, you might pick up one or two more heavier whites. Let's get a little heavier white there too. Down here towards the end and you might pick up the other end of the feather here folding over that way. If you can, it all depends you know on, on the bird how much detail you're going to give in these particular areas. Sometimes I give a lot, sometimes I don't. It all depends on the bird and the painting itself. How much interest I'm going to be giving to the bird in relationship to the other objects in the painting as well. Now let's take some of this light tan and let's just stroke back up this way because these would be showing up into a few feathers here as well on his mantle or his back, the shoulder. The mantle's the kind of the feathers of the shoulder and the back part of his back there. So this would also go over to a little yellow. Might pick up a stroke or two of that coming through there of those yellows there and some of those purpley colors again let's just stroke a few of those through see I love those all those modeling of those colors that's what gets it so interesting let's take some of that yellow tan right in here and let's just before we negative paint in there let's just add a little bit of that so what I'm really kind of doing is just modeling up that area again now I'll take some burnt sienna Let's come right down into this purpley color here. This will soften off the burnt sienna. We'll also add a bit of blue here, which will darken it down. So a little bit of the blue here to that. Let me get a little bit more. Darken that down. That's a pretty color there. Like a little bit of that purpley color into that burnt sienna. So pretty. Soften it there with a little light. And let's come in. And just do some strokes, some short strokes of this to paint out down towards those light tips here. And sometimes that round is like too perfect to uh, to do that. So I, I step down and brush. Let me grab my little one here. The brush I really like to paint some of that stuff with and, and negative paint out is my little too flat. That works really, really well. So let's just take some of these colors here. Let's take a little burnt sienna down here too because I'm constantly changing the tone. So here would be a good area. Down here would be a good area, a little darker. Um, 
so these tones are always changing down through here so we'll come up and we'll take a little bit of that one grab a little bit of this one grab a little bit there let's grab a little bit here paint that down let's change that up a bit see these feathers coming down there like that pulling down you see the different colors onto them here it's like different edges you can give like a little corner to this here and you can give some smaller little edges to feathers here like that just as they can you know you'll see a little bit of those feathers which is nice We'll use just the chisel of this brush and paint out down now some of this light color down this way. So turn your brush, put a little model, a little bit of the different colors into it. Here, turn it onto its chisel and just pull down like this and let, and let it kind of paint out the white that we don't need here. And just like that, and that'll put those little edges. Now you can come back and with just a little corner of the white and restate any of the little edges of those feathers that you want. But just until you get a nice look to those feathers, that's all I'm, I really like to have. Here, maybe a little purpley color in with that. And I'll just, I'll come back in through here and just restate a few of these little covert feathers and come back and paint back through them again like that. So that sets that up a little different, see? Let's take some of that brown and uh, burnt sienna here. Change the tone, change the tone. Always change the tone. Here. That's the big part. Change that color tone. Don't take too many strokes with the same tone. Then you get this evolution of the tones, which is wonderful. Let's get a little more purple tone here with some burnt sienna some more of that blue into that a little different tone let's use that a little darker a little different here a little touch of it to some of those some of that up here stroking up into there this carries that color go and this is a beautiful like to do the mantle feathers back here you know we'll start to lighten up back here into the back some of the mantle area this is beautiful lights up here it's purple and burnt sienna beautiful little lights that would go on the back of his mantle there see and you just do some quick little strokes and it looks like feathers and don't stroke up too many times you'll lose all the tones so just pull a couple of quick little ones like that and then that might look like feathers and then let the rest of it just get modeled and it'll look like feathers. The modeling also just looks like feathers, just smaller ones coming together. So let's just, so there's this little two like this. I like to use it in conjunction with the four when I paint and now this is stiffening up a bit up here. So that's working pretty nice, but I still might let it dry up a bit more as we and go paint some flowers here. We'll put some of this light on and see. Yeah, we might let that stiffen up a bit as we go paint some of the flowers. But you can see here that uh, June will step back. He starts to get a pretty good look to him right now. And uh, we've, of course, got to do some... Uh, some more uh, stuff to him, some more lights and everything, but he's getting a pretty good look. Let's take some of our grays, our blue grays. We'll just use the chisel of this little brush and we'll uh, give the idea of his feet and stuff coming out here, joining into uh, into these, these areas here. And I like to get just real sketchy and suggestive of those, of his feet. I don't like to paint, and those of you who painted a lot of my birds know them. I, lecture you on this every time I'm sorry but I just don't like the bird's feet you know I know they're very useful to them they just look like giant claws and they overtake the entire painting so 
I usually, you know, just suggest them, you know, for a little bit. Let's set that brush down here for a second. Let's come back up here and uh, let's go up. Let's grab a little bit of pine green. Let's go right over to some of our burnt siennas and pine greens. Love those colors together. I'm going to pull some of the colors also if I keep that a little less burnt sienna and I mean a little less pine green, a little bit more towards the burnt sienna here. Um, you know, I'll pull beautiful colors and tones off of the uh, off of that kingbird and stuff. I want my greens, so I got to have some of my greens here down like this. Uh, but I want to put these on kind of soft and brushy right down here like this. Just kind of whisper these up here like this. Let the color kind of run out and get really suggestive. I like to and just move this around. It's that blue starting to tack up a bit. It's been an hour. That blue starting to tack up there just a bit, which is what I want. I want this just very light and suggestive. You can also thin this way out and just put on some suggestive that way. Just some a little bit of color and stuff up there. Okay, I don't want to, we're not going to make perfect leaves and stuff on this. We're just going to move color and, uh, you know, maybe make a stripe or so of green. So it's a, you know, it's like everything. You get these beautiful bang of green or bang of a, you know, a little bit more burnt sienna or something like that. So you, you get some of those colors like we have all this burnt sienna on him and stuff. So I might take a, you know, a shot or two here of burnt sienna you know, into these, into these areas here. And, um, we'll back off just a bit of that here and there. And, uh, lost kind of the idea I had my flowers, so I'll, I'll, uh, wing it here. That's a bird pun. <laughs> just, it was terrible, I'm sorry. And so we'll, uh, we'll just, uh, kind of eyeball it here and just kind of do what we're going to do. I'm going to go larger brush. Let's go like a number eight, eight or a ten here. And um, I'm just going to go right down. If I want this bird to go or these flowers to go with everything in the bird, I'm just going to take some of my colors right from all of my flowers, right from everything. Start tossing it all together here. Get Find a color. I like it kind of I want them a little bit yellowy blues and stuff like that, but I've got a nice, a beautiful, nice gray in there now. And I want to also have some that are, of that tossed right into some yellow oxide, which is one of the yellows that are appearing onto the, you know, onto the bird. And so I'm going to start out this with just a nice, I'm just going to paint into these areas here where I want some of these flowers with some yellow oxide that's just been grayed down here by, uh, some of all of these other colors. So this is grayed down with some, all these other colors. And put it on here till you start to cover up some of those you know, painting lines that you might have up there and everything. So just kind of dance that around a bit. Let me come back just a little bit more here. Doesn't have to go back that far, but here we go. And I'm just going to Splash this around here. Around like that and then some yellows back in here. All kinds of stuff going on back in there. And you still see the bird. That's the most important part. You know, you still see what's going on with the bird. We don't want to lose our king bird here. So, but we'll get real casual with our flowers. And I usually end up covering up all of my patterns and all that kind of stuff. But I don't use them anyway. You know, I, I draw, I sketch, and that's just my original idea. It gives me a feeling of what I want to have with the spray. By the time I get into the painting of it, it's usually changed so much. You know, I'm, and some of my feeling may change. So I'm just going to toss a little bit of that around. So a pattern or a sketch is something that... I use to help me in the initial part of a painting. Do I adhere to it always? No. In other words, I'll change it. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest, and I like to really take my brush like this, and I like to I'm gonna suggest some some stem lines, which will be movement lines through the painting here. And you can hear I sometimes just scratch that ferrule right up onto the surface there, like that, and create that movement. Sometimes I use like the little chisel 
and draw up and through and down and I like to have movement lines through the painting and, and um, because they help with all kinds of the visual part of the movement of the painting here and down and sometimes there are suggestions sometimes they you know I try not to do them too heavy so they overtake but just uh, just movements just add a little sprays of movements there that go out like that let's restate some of our our greens a little heavier this is going to be up into my center of interest here and uh, I might want to take one or two of that green right up by his body so it looks like it's gonna his body's gonna go right in front of that green and maybe it will take some down there on this side too so some of it's just gonna be traveling up this way you might pick up that color coming out of that way right there like that there so it looks like it's going right through him there okay and uh, a few other little areas of that coming down like that that's nice. So it kind of fills that whole area up there. And uh, not to lose his uh, his feet too much. I'll just restate those real quick. There. I even stated one with green. And it, it looks great. It looks like it. It's fine. You know, it has a little green in there. That's okay. And, you know, that's the whole thing is something happens like that. You just let that happen. Because, you know, painting is half imagination. And if you go in there and you define everything so perfectly, there's no imagination for the viewer to have. So, you know, you put on impressions and, and stuff, and then the viewer will take it from there. You know, they'll take over some of that work from there. Now, let's go down and let's grab, we have our yellows. Let's get down in here to our whites. And let's get some pretty, nice, light, fun, uh, daisy type, a daisy type flowers we want to that we might want to have on here. I want them a little bit wider petaled than a daisy here. Let's go have some yellows into them and we'll pull some different petals. Now, sometimes when I paint these, I paint them back and forth several times. Sometimes I do them just once real quick. It all depends on what the feel is and how is it's going to play. So I'm pulling in, sometimes I pull out. You notice I, I'm a lot of times just reloading my brush after a few strokes because I'm barely touching the surface, just laying down the color here. Sometimes I'll use the chisel edge to make a different shape of petal. And uh, we, can, we can make some light turned up like this to make that petal look like it turns out like that. That's kind of pretty. You know, so you do a lighter stroke right like that. Nice texture into that down like that you can uh, you know sometimes I'll do this is I'll lift the daisy in and out or the, the blossom flower I'm painting in and out with the center like that that loosens it up then I come back and I do it again I set the light back in there again and just like that and that uh, just gives more interest to it more color movement more life to the to the flower here get some more light maybe a touch of Hansa into that and some yellow oxide some thicker color nice thick white and just laying it on the surface here like that sometimes I'll take it back off and do it again and I'll do that several times until I get the movement of the daisy that I want or flower that I want here Lay out some thick color here, like that. That's kind of pretty. And I paint really, really fast. So here, I'll cover up part of that foot so I don't have to worry about that big pterodactyl foot on him right there. And uh, maybe just a little short stroke here. Those coming out on this side there like that just very casual and for the longest time that was so hard for me to paint like this and now it's just I've painted so many of them so fast I've done so many fast color studies of these types of flowers and stuff that I can paint like that really fast with a lot of confidence and people how do you get that way you paint and you paint 
and you paint. You paint so many of them that it's in second nature to you. And, you know, so many of my students are, and so many people I talk to on Facebook and other social networking and stuff, you know, they always say, oh, mine never looked that way. Well, mine didn't either. Not for a long time. I just sits down and, you know, I write books like the two-hour composition or the, the 30-minute composition. And I tell you, you have to paint and paint and paint them. I tell you, I paint three, four paintings a day, fast little compositions like this. And it's practice and practice and practice. And if you do two paintings a day, small compositions, two paintings a day, in a couple of weeks you'll have the confidence down to paint these types of flowers. That's the way it works. But to sit there and watch a hundred videos of it over and over and over again without putting the brush and the paint in your hand, you'll never learn that way. Yes, you will understand it, but you don't, it, it takes, it takes a while to get to your hand. That's what I'm trying to say is getting it to your hand is a whole other separate journey. So I'll, I'll put in a little bit of light. Now back here, I want this to fade away a little bit. So I just softened my colors just a touch more here and Let's put in a, a let's put in a little bit heavier one here that takes your eye out away from the kingbird just a bit here. There we go. We'll, we'll let that sit like that. Maybe another one here that and and to take your eye out and away, I can pull out. And so if I pull out, that gives more of a fractured edge to the daisy petal out at the edge there, and that makes it a little bit softer out like that. So I can have a couple like that that soften. Matter of fact, I can hit the edge of these and any one of those is hit the edge or use your finger and take that off and and pull that edge out to soften that edge so it doesn't have quite as much power pulling your eye out here let's put in another softer one there one coming out like that that's kind of nice maybe a light front petal here this comes like that maybe we'll uh be able to see the center on that one so let's just put a couple of small ones right up here to the front like it's turning we'll pull out pull out just a bit like this one's going to turn and it doesn't work like I'll, I'll reset it i'll set it back like that and i'll look at the motion of it i paint for movement and so i'm not painting petals i'm painting the movement of the daisy or the flower the blossom going in and out in and out in and out and when i lay the brush just barely touching the surface like this and pull out yes it's going to look like petals but i'm painting that for movement more than anything else here just the movement of this pulling out like that and that's what makes it soft and some of them are a little bit more uh you know structured and we'll put some soft ones there We'll pull out, since, since we want this to fade away, we'll just pull out like that and let those just fade out like that. We'll let one fade out up here like that. We'll make a more faded one out here like that. Maybe there's this one out there. Just give us some movement here. Just give some movement of this going out and that'll look like, to the viewers, that'll look like little daisies pulling out and coming back and you know, pulling out there. Now that they see what these are, the rest of it can just be suggestions of colors and movements here. It doesn't need to be perfect. Let's put a little bit more movement right up in here in the center, like there's some other daisies and stuff underneath there. Because we're not going to have that many leaves. I don't want to have that many leaves. I want this to be about the flowers and the bird this time. Let's pick out a little more light and just... just Nice textured white and just hitting the surface here and just laying that texture down. You know, there's a certain amount that needs to be said about textured paintings that is so very, very true. Now let's come in. Let's take a little bit of our burnt sienna and some yellow oxide here. And let's just impart darker, darker centers to these. I'm not going to get rid of all the green and other colors you see in there. I'm just going to put some of this in here. And let's just not do that. Let's do this one. Maybe we'll have one that'll show up right there. This one we'll see a little bit of right there. Maybe an edge of that one. Maybe a bit onto that one there. And the rest, we'll let these kind of, well, let's just see a little bit right there. 
because I can just take my brush with just a little chisel angle like that and make that look like that's one just kind of turned there. Now, I'll take a little bit of light into the brush and we'll just soften the edges of that so it's not like a circle here. Just soften that edge, just break that edge. We call fracturing the edge of color here. We'll just fracture that edge there. Do we want to have any darker color? A little burnt sienna and uh, um, pine green is a nice little dark touch to put into, especially the ones right around the center. Then we can grab some of that Hansa yellow here. Maybe pick up some of that white with it right on the corner of the brush. Hansa yellow and white. And tap some of that. Just a little bit of that into that into that center there. Now, this one's a bit light, so I'm losing the center. So what I do is I'll wipe my brush. Matter of fact, just whisk it ourselves a nice clean paper towel. Wipe my brush off. So I've got a clean brush. I'm just going to set the brush down a little bit, touch, and then lift off. And I'm going to lift some of that light right out from that center out onto that petal here, like that, lifting off some of that extra paint and expressing the color that's down below, which then I will just shoot in a little bit more of my burnt sienna and stuff like that. I'll set that color in now. I can pull out, I can just pull out like this, back out like this and soften that whole look of that daisy if I feel like, okay, maybe I got too white onto these like this so I can come back out and lift out. And I do this a lot and sometimes I'll do this and then turn around and come back and put the light right back up on top of it again. Sometimes I'll go back and forth like that six or seven times in the painting of a flower until I get all of them to about the length or the look that I want them to have. I can negative paint back through some, take out some, take out some of those edges that I thought might be a bit too much there, like that. Just soften some of those looks. Let's go back with some burnt sienna and, and reset some of our burnt sienna right into that center there. Let's reset some burnt sienna into that one there. Now I can come back and reset my lights back up onto the tip of this as well if I want and pull back in and pull back and forth till I get the, the daisy to the way I want that daisy to, to look. I want maybe this to have a little more power right there. There and pull the color out. Just lightly touch the brush and pull out. And that's what gives such lovely coloring into these flowers is the working of it back and forth. But you're using a lot of paint and it takes an, a very light touch and some very thick paint. And more than anything else, it takes practice to figure out how to do this because everybody's hands a little different. You know, sometimes I tell my students, when you feel like you have absolutely no control, it's time to go put it on the hairdryer and let it tack up. I call it the heritage tack. Let it tack up, let it tighten up. And then when it becomes tight, then it's easy to lay on other colors on top of it. Okay. And, you know, you're, I'm no different than you are. It's, you know, I, this isn't something that just came natural to me. This is something that I had to practice to be able to do this, okay? It takes practice. But if you feel like you have no control, go get it tight, go tighten it up a little bit, then paint it, and it's so much easier to than sitting here and fighting it, fighting the, the, the wetness of the acrylic, that it's so wet. And some of you that have been pure acrylic painters, you know, might have some issues with that because you're not used to oils. And, you know, I painted with oils for years before I went to acrylics. See, I can take that back off and set that petal in there. And the more times I do that, the prettier this little flower comes because the colors are moving back and forth and around in this flower and they're coming prettier. And that's what I like to do that. So I'm gonna just take a corner of my Hansa yellow and light here and we'll add a, a bit of that around into this flower here. That's pretty. Now you see I worked that burnt sienna in there. See how that yellow shows up, you know, more into these flowers now. And then we'll tap that a little heavier. Let's tap just a bit of that around into this one. Here, you see just a touch of that, maybe just a touch of that into this one out here, a little bit there. Because these are softer ones out here, we'll just see a little bit of that color. 
a little bit out here. These are the main interest ones right up in here that we want to preserve and, and see more than anything else. And uh, we'll look at those. We'll set these petals here again one more time. Set these coming out. And you can curve them like this and lift up like that to make it look like the, the daisy's curving just a bit, the flower's curving just a bit here. There we go. Just like that. Pretty little, pretty little thing. Set some movement out here. Like that. That's nice. A little extra movement. A little extra greens for like little, like little stems and movements down through here. Little strokes of green. A little green and burnt sienna. You can negative paint up, which we talk about quite a bit in all of the books and techniques. So we take some of your background color, in this case negative painting is the background color, and come back in and paint around something and, you know, shape up daisies or something like that if you want. I don't want to shape that up too much. I like that casualness to it. But you can come in and add some little touches of contrast and other little things of movements of leaves or something like that. Little touches in here. This is where I like to just really let the brush just kind of dance and loosen it up a bit. Um, these right here, you can put, you know, turned backwards sideways, you can put on like a little idea of a calyx here and a little idea of the stem there to that. Here, a little idea of a calyx there. And that helps those out there. Maybe you see a little bit of that. A few little jaggedy lines, nice little movement lines. You know, those are, just use your chisel of the brush and just a little bit of pressure coming through there. That just always helps so much like that. Now, let's zoom. So I have all of that in there. I like that. I like that movement. It's different. I like all that. It's casual, which is what I really want, and it's different. Now I'll come back up, I have all of that, and I have to start adding a little more light and a little more interest to my bird. So I'll go back to my, I can use my, um, I can use any brush, I can use that little two, but I'm going to start adding some details up here first with some feathering of my, uh, and I'm going to use my bridge, with the feathering of my uh, small round here, like this, and start to add some lighter, feather strokes here that are going to be up and around his face here down it's going to drive some of that light right up here there we go some small little touches right around here which is really kind of the ends of his feathers the small ends of his feathers up and around between his his uh, beak and let's come in just a bit more here Okay, um, that's right in between his beak and um, his eye there. And, uh, you know, you can put on tiny, tiny little shine. Just kind of touches in there. Let's pull out some small little feathers. And this is so much easier now that this is tacked up. Just give it 10 or 15 minutes there to tack up a bit. And it just goes so much easier. Let's pull some of these out this way. These lights and these grays here. Sometimes when I paint these birds, I put a little more color or into the actual tones than you may see in the real bird sometimes. And, you know, I still can't, can't keep the, the main, you know, colors and feathering and stuff, but it's just, it's a painting, you know, it's like, you know, it's like an artist painting a portrait, you know, it's what I call these, these are bird portrait pe techniques, and, um, or, you know, gallery painting techniques, so you want to, you know, paint the bird at its best, and sometimes out in the field when you're taking photos, the bird isn't at its best, <laughs> so, depends on the time of year, too, but, uh, you know, it's just like you get up first in the morning. You're not always at your best. Sometimes birds aren't at their best in a photo, but you can certainly paint them at their best. So I'm just putting a little light, and this will help advance this bird right down in through here and gives a 
little bit more interest down through his body here. And we got to build out that thigh area there just a bit where that foot is. A few little feathery strokes. See how I pull the feathers down? I point and then set down. Point, set down. There like that. That sets him down. Like that. There we go. down like that so you see you just got if you get too much or too much in there you can soften it with your finger or you can come back and put a few strokes of the, the dark color back in there now I'm just going to take this off tone just a bit over here towards with a little bit of the blue into it so the tones just a little different and let's just pull a few little strokes of that especially um down over here over his mantle let's add just a bit more yellow yellow gray not quite as light we don't want the mantle quite as light so gray it down just a bit here and let's add a few right on top of those other ones smaller little touches here right on top of some of those other ones and uh, that's pretty Maybe a few little touches here. You see, get some of these other little tones in there. I don't want to lose the blueness to the top of his head, which I'm going to put back in right now. We'll go up here and and grab some of this. Uh, I got this all very heavy here, so I'm just going to push some of this off to the side. I usually have my palette knife right here, but it's kind of like disappeared. So I'll just push some of this off to the side here like this just a bit and give myself a clean area for you to see that. There we go. And we'll take some blue, ultramarine blue, quite a bit of white. So we'll get that blue and maybe a bit of that violet into that. Love that violet. Almost like a they're really kind of gray, but that, you know, depends on the way the light hits them. You get this real light. That's pretty. Light kind of violety blue here. Right into some white here. And we'll use this. That might be just a, just a hint purple. Hint too, too purple. Let's try this. And just kind of follow his contours around. Set some of that down here. And uh, let's get just a bit more blue. And then we'll get this nice. And it's just I have a lot of that, pur that purple color, which I like. I have a lot of it down already. And if I keep stroking just that tone, he's going to become purple. And I don't want that. Let me clean that off there again. Get a little too much of that there. It's got to go more towards that. And that's the other thing I forget. If you add, if you keep going to that, you can always add the thalo blue down into it. That takes that. I, I just spaced that. Now I just remember that thalo blue. See how more blue it keeps it? The the two together. The And then you can get into some of that violet. But see, that thalo blue is so much more powerful that it keeps it that blue. You know, which that's what we want. Some of that blue. I like that violet color in there, but I want some of that blue in there as well. Blue on this gray color. We can gray that blue up just a bit. That's kind of nice. It's it's a tone. When I start to find these these final tones, I kind of take my I, I play with them until I find them that is just going to give the right amount of interest. And then I make sure that I don't paint too many strokes with that same tone before I change it again. Here. And this is what gives it life. Look at the different colors that are now coming up into his head there. And I want to I wanna use some of this gray back in here and, and back some of that purple color off just a bit. Maybe a bit of that gray and brown. Got this a little heavy to one side of the tone there. That's nice. 
right in there like that. Look at all those colors that are in his head now. See? That's what I like now. Let's get some real light. Kind of lights coming right down through here. Just light little feathers coming down through here. There we go. If you get too much light, then you take it out. Like I might take a little bit of this gray and just back paint out just a bit of that here and there. There we go. And then, and, and this is what I do. I reset some of my lights back up here again. I go back and forth like this a few times, being kind of careful. I don't paint out too much. And that's what gives you such a lovely, lovely look to it. Now, normally I would come back in and I would use my lights here. And we have this uh, light color. And we were using some of that nice light ultramarine blue here, which I have right up here. A little bit of the thalo into that to keep that nice blue. Here, I was saving some of that for later, but kind of used it up, so it's not a biggie. I just make a color that's close to it, and I'm going to come back in and get rid of some of the streaks and stuff and that are right here by him, and I started doing this in the, in the, the last couple books, the bird books and stuff, and uh, just painting right up and looking at the bird's head, because I really like this bird's head to pop off. So I like the color of the blue of the sky to be pretty heavy, sometimes a, a little bit lighter right in that area, but not too streaky. Um, you know, there's a lot of times, like in the flowers and stuff, I like it to be a little streaky, but I don't into the birds here because this plays up against his head here. We'll just streak right down into the, pull this right down into that area there. But this plays right up against his head here. And I like this head just to pop off of that background. So it actually gives a little bit better area or frames his head a little bit better when the color's a little more solid like that. And we'll streak that out just a bit here. Maybe a bit of light out here like this. You know, I've got these daisies that come out here. So maybe a bit of light just popping out like that. It just, you know, get some more movement back up in there like that. If you go out over the edge, and I didn't do it too much there, so I'm fine. But um, if you go out over this edge, this is where you, you would on like the head, his head here. stuff. So decide just how much you're going to clean that area is going to pop him forward. So, you know, here I've got a certain amount of lost edges and stuff up here to the edge. It's not a clean, completely fine line. And I kind of like that. I'm going to leave that. But, uh, you know, you can really pop him forward by uh, adding some of that, um, uh, you know, nice clear color right down into there as well. So if that's something you want to do, you can do that. I'm just going to back paint out some of this light just a bit. So his head comes back just a bit more gray. And uh, I just feel that he's a little too light. Of course, the acrylics dry down a little bit too, so we have to remember that. And now I've got that just a little bit too much the same streakiness there. So I'll just break that up with just a few little touches of my yellows there like that. That's nice. Let's streak a little bit right up here and then let's just repeat that light one more time down like this and that gets him that that's pretty much I like all these little tones now see all that little work we did there see all the little tones that goes around his eyes and stuff there now that all just works that all works in there now we'll just darken this we'll make sure we got a that's the other thing. we got to make sure we have a couple of nice dark, kind of like uh, right where his mantle and his neck kind of come together. There'll usually be a shadowing of the, the feathers right in that area there too. So we got to add some of that back in there. Just like that. Just real boom. Put it in. A little blue-black. Soften it with a little bit of gray. A little white, a little gray. Here. Just soften some of that color back just a bit. And uh, 
Just a few little touches of that. That's nice. Maybe, uh, you know, when I look, if, if it's all the same here, maybe I'll take a little bit of that gray, that blue-gray, right down like this, and just kind of break up that yellow tone that's there, just with a little bit of that gray. And that's what makes him, you know, that's what gives you the real prettiness of him here you see all the tones and so this is what everyone is I used to be so sterile with my color breaks and then I started to to uh, you know study birds more and realize no you know you see some of those other you know yeah on some birds like goldfinch and stuff like that the color breaks pretty severe but on other birds they the feathers override each other a little bit so the the breaks aren't quite so noticeable you know and and that's what I started to notice and uh you know, that they're not absolutely perfect breaks and of color. So, you know, and that's what I start to paint for is those things softening out. Let's put a little softer yellow right up here and let that softer yellow, so it goes from that, that, that darker blue right into this little softer yellow and the grays and right down into the brighter yellows down here and work those tones. And that's what I look for. Maybe I'll put just a few strokes of a lighter little yellow tone right in there. Just a few little light hits of that. And that's what I like to do. And I like to paint back and forth like this because I'm watching the bird. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of a different way. You have to sit down and enjoy that working of those tones. Paint one, paint another, cross, back and forth. Try not to paint too long. That's my biggest, my biggest advice to you is don't paint too long with one color on your brush. Constantly, I always say three and get out. No more than three touches and get out and go make another tone, okay? Alrighty, have a good time painting it and I'll see you on the next DVD. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.